with a special uh, bundle of software applications exclusively for the startups. And we are very soon going to work with Deshpande Foundation and Sandbox Startups in offering these software applications exclusively for the startups. And um, so the apps will fall under any of this category that we have. Are you all able to see the projector over there? So the positive impact with which we want to start is we want to give all these software applications for free for a year and the total worth of these software applications that will help you run your business comes close to 10 lakh of value and we pay absolutely nothing. So we want the startups to set things up to start off on the right foot without having to worry about what software to buy and how much hole it, it you know burns in your pocket, right? So we are based in Chennai, for those who don't know much about Zoho, uh, we have our uh, headquarters, the warehouse, where much of the software development happens, is in Chennai office, and we also have locations across the globe. Uh, our CEO works out of the Pleasanton office uh, in California. And right now as we speak, we are touching 25 million customers from across the world, and we have more than 30 plus applications um, that form the suite of apps in Zoho and we've grown to close to um, 4,500 employees. So when I joined Zoho seven years back, there were hardly 1,500 people and much of the apps that we see in the suite do not exist. So it's been a steady growth over a period of time and that's what I would walk you through in the next 20 minutes or so. So um, the main theme that we want to focus now is these are the software apps that are made completely in India and it's made for the entire world. So I'm going to walk you through the history quickly and um, to begin with, as you know, I, I, I just told you I, I joined Zoho only seven years back, but Zoho has been existing for 20 years. So what I'm going to talk about in the next five, ten minutes is what I have directly heard from, heard from my CEO and my senior mentors in the office. So I'm going to share the history via what I, I got to know from them. So when Zoho began, uh, it wasn't called Zoho. Um, so the confusion began with which, which of these crossroads to take. So um, the CEO, Sridhar Vembu, and one of his seniors from IIT Madras, together, uh, they just formed a team, rented an old shack, uh, two-bedroom shack uh, in Tambaram in Chennai, and worked out of this office uh, from day one without any capital or uh, without uh, any investment. So the idea initially was um, to create software applications. The co-founder, Tony Thomas, he wrote a lot of code where they um, targeted the OEMs, that is uh, the original equipment manufacturers. They made small applications that will fit in with these uh, and they sold it in 1996. And then um, because we have to survive in the industry, we also extended towards the IT where uh, we sold a bunch of um, IT products and we called it Manage Engine way back in 2001. Uh, it still exists as Zoho Corporation, WebNMS and Manage Engine also are a part of it. And um, in 2005, we wrote the cloud wave um, where we started Zoho as such. Till then it was called AdwinNet and we didn't have a lot of applications that we have today. So to start with, we did a lot of cross-platforms where um, it's multifunctional on different platforms. Starting there, that gave us a selling point, and I was told that uh, our CEO was employed elsewhere. So his salary was the only capital uh, these people had when they worked out of the shack, and uh, they didn't have any investment, major investment at that time. So if you look at the growth from 96 to what we are in 2016, it's been a steady growth. We didn't hire a lot of employees, until cloud came into business. So after 2005, uh, we hired a lot of employees and we started working on building software applications on the cloud. And this is a quick number. Uh, right now, Zoho is touching 25 million customers, but we're planning to um, you know, extend and focus in India more this year. So uh, for those who have not heard about Zoho, this is just a quick introduction um, of what we are. We are an operating system for business 
and a quick definition of operating system if you would ask. It's, it runs everything of something, just like you have uh, a computer operating system or a car operating system that has various components that helps the car basically to function. We are the operating system for business. So we give you all the important components that you need to run your business, to set your business and also to scale it up. Right? So um, if you want to know about what the thought process was for Zoho to come into existence, what is the purpose that we mulled over um, for these apps to come into uh, business? is we thought about what does any business do? Why does it come into existence? So we, we categorized basically this into four categories. So a business, basically it models an activity and you have a quality that you follow throughout from the beginning till you introduce it to the market. And any problem that you take that your business wants to solve helps in reducing error and thereby also frees a lot of time. Right, so based on this, so we categorize this into what do we want our business to do. So we want to manage our customers, right, so that's why we do business. We also want to run our operations as we see cash flow um, and as we see more employees joining the organization. We also want to run our own operations and we also want to empower the employees who are joining us. So in a 3D way, we wanted to uh, run our own business. We, we run Zoho on Zoho and we also wanted to address the market based on this. So when you take managed customers, once again you can look at it from three different angles. First, you reach out to your potential prospects and everyone and then you start acquiring these customers. So more than that, what is the most important part of a business plan is when you start retaining your customers. So um, we looked at what apps we can bring to the market that will help you market your business, that also helps you in sales and also helps in retaining the customers by offering them support. So if you look at these fundamental principles, you can stretch it to any business applications in the world, it's, it's quite simplified. And if you want to run operations, you look at uh, the people that you hire and the cash flow that comes in and, and various other assets that you want to manage. So that resulted in us getting apps that are specific to recruitment, that is human resources, and how to manage the finance internally and externally, and also run your IT business. So I'll come back to the list of apps later. So to empower your employees, inside Zoho, if you see, we have the marketing department, we have uh, the creative that works on the website design and the landing pages and everything. There are a bunch of editors who help in uh, getting good content out there. We also have an internal forum of discussions. So we have a lot that is happening inside our office too. So to, to help establish an um, environment that will help both in creativity and collaboration, we needed a bunch of apps, right? And how do you communicate with the customers and also with your internal employees. So keeping this in mind, that is authoring content, sharing it, and also communicating and collaborating, we came up with a bunch of apps. So basically, the segment goes back to all of this. You manage everything around your business all in one place. So you don't have to run in different directions. You don't have to manage multiple vendors. You don't have to worry about data and security. And you don't have to uh, go through the trouble of dif uh, remembering different usernames and password. And when an, a certain employee that plays an important role in your startup leaves, then there's a lot of responsibility they leave behind. So how do you catch up from there? So to avoid all of this, you have all the solutions under one cloud. So this kind of growth that we have that can give you a complete business solution did not happen overnight. So if you look at the history of Zoho, we, when I joined, we hardly had two applications, that is the Zoho CRM, and we also had Zoho Connect that helped in uh, collaborating internally, more like an internal forum of sorts. From there, we have gradually evolved, gradually added one or two applications to the kitty, and now we have more than 30 plus applications in the market. So um, this is one quick uh, survey that one of my seniors did to help in this presentation. So we asked real people, you know, we have all these solutions in one, under one roof. 
what happens to those who have not heard about zoho or who have been into existence and running been running their business for a long time so the question asked was how do various uh, you know businesses what kind of technology do they use and um, for example what do you do for your crm what is the forum that you use for internal discussions or for any announcement what is the app that you use for invoicing so we we um, ran a bunch of these questions across our friends and this is the result that we got so you you see how many uh, solutions that we have to run to how many vendors we have to manage to help our business run so the very purpose of zoho coming uh, into existence is to eliminate all these challenges that any small businesses or a startup or any business of any size would face to have all these solutions under one umbrella so so the end result of the survey was some of them ran their business partly on cloud partly on premise so it is kind of hodgepodge uh, you know quick fix kind of solutions so we were just wondering if everything was fine and uh, the sorry the image is not loading so we we saw that the end result was a lot of mayhem for the user and you don't have to imagine the plight of the admin if you hire someone you know what maybe it resulted in this condition and what does it do to your customer so the end result of all your poor management and uh, data and security problems and all that what does it do to the customer right so on top of this what happens when various department inside your business your startup or your small business does not have a platform to talk to each other and to be connected with each other when you start off probably your two people who are co-founding a company and then before you know you you have spotted customers and then you're growing at a speed and suddenly when you look back you see this this kind of happened in the initial stages even in our very own organization where there is a collection the receivables department sends one mail to the customer saying okay your time up for payment and then please go ahead and make it within the period of 30 days and the same campaigns department sends another mail to the customer saying we have a special offer running today and then there is an irate customer the same customer who has written to us saying the problem that she has reported it still remains the same and unaware of all this we have been selling a product up front with with a lot of sales and discounts to the same customer the customer is not willing to use it anymore right and then we have the marketing team so it's that disconnected while you grow and this is how we serve the customers right imagine their plight so it's not just important to have a random set of tools and say okay i'll get my business running so what do these tools do to each other it's not depending on how well they work but how well they work together right so this helps in bringing all the departments together in a way which is one of the prime reasons why zoho looks at integrating tightly with various of our other solutions that we offer they don't function parallelly they don't function individually but they also function seamlessly with a lot of other apps that we have so how do some companies uh, once again when we did a survey we found that it's a kind of jugaad that they do a quick fix that they do with some home grown tools hire an it guy who really does not understand your business you don't you don't exactly understand what that person does sitting in the office and some day he vanishes you don't know what, how to run your business anymore so we see that the second way is to get a lot of apps and then work on talking to each other right so before you get your business up and running there's a lot of homework that you have to do and this is a third way where there is there is a bunch of uh, solutions that you put and you work on in making them integrate so a lot of what you earn at that time you spend on setting this infrastructure up so keeping this all in mind we came up with why not have these solutions under one roof so for example if you take any random uh, applications from zoho for example zoho projects and invoice say i'm running a project i have a vendor i have a client and over a period of time 
I either receive payments or I have to make payments and I also have customers in the same project. So do I have to run to another um, invoice solution that does not really talk to my projects? So depending on how much time someone has worked on my project, I automate the billing process by making my project and my invoice talk to each other. Another example is how we communicate with people. Say um, inside your organization, someone wants to communicate via chat. These days, these days you have skills that is present across the globe, right? Your marketing person can sit in Spain. Um, the head of um, a design can work out of India. Somebody else is in New Zealand. So uh, to be in the same time zone, say someone is uh, quickly opening a chat window and talking and you're just new to the organization and you don't know who is who. So you get this information from a people management system that tells you who this person is, what uh, in the hierarchy, the role that they play and everything. So the chat, is integrated with the HR tool that we have. So if I'm talking to someone, I know who that person is and who that person's boss is too. So thinking about, I'm going to skip some parts of this. This is just examples of how several applications inside Zoho also talk to each other. So if you have someone who's visiting your website, right, and then they have a question, it reaches a level where um, they want to know more technicalities about your product which a support, a customer support representative can answer. So you can always generate a ticket directly from there and connect them via help desk where a customer support ticket has been originated. So the CRM talks to campaigns. So if I have a bunch of leads and I want to run, you know, run a newsletter to all these bunch of people, my CRM is integrated with campaigns. So once I have a newsletter or an email that has to be sent to this bunch of people, you can always send it because they are integrated. So let me skip these parts. So I, I just have a quick pop quiz here to understand how the organization, Zoho as an organization, functions internally. An important part of history, an important part of success is we all employees who make Zoho what it is today other than the customers. So can anyone take a guess of um, what this setup can be? Which organization functions in this setup? So th there, is, there is a central point from where there is a lot of directions and orders that is given to various employees. No, this is famous organization from the world. The center is of course the CEO or the head. And I'm asking you to guess the name of the company that functions in this way, hierarchically. The way in which order and direction flows. So maybe I'll do, give you the first clue and then, then you know what it is. This is Apple. Any guesses of what this can be? So this is just to understand how people within the org work collaboratively. Okay, Google. This? Good guess, but close. Facebook. Okay, do, okay, that's nice. He says it's his organization. Okay, Microsoft. Sorry, yeah. Any guesses on this? Sorry? Startup? That's a good guess, yes. I mean, and our, our org, Zoho, also functions a lot like this. It might look like there's a lot of mayhem, no direction, lots of confusion, who's talking to and what's happening, but we do a lot of collaboration, uh, we do a lot of locking horns within the org. In, in a very basic way, we are still startups. So we do a lot of dog fooding within the company. And we give a lot of feedback before any product goes out. That's like a typical startup. So um, in, in the process of sharing history, I'm also sharing some of the books that we as employees inside Zoho were recommended to read. And this stands very apt to any entrepreneur or the startup because they, we all think that we have to come up with a plan. We all think that we, we need a CEO and a co-founder in place as we start up. 
We need a business plan. We have to know where we will be in, at the end of six months. What is my office going to look like? Will I have some uh, cushiony place and, and a free running Wi-Fi and an endless supply of coffee for me to get started? So this book gives you an insight, um, you know, right on the face that you don't need any of this to be a successful entrepreneur. So this was one of the strongly recommended books that we all still reading and rereading. And um, so if, if you look at my presentation, I have basically divided it into how Zoho has evolved till this day. And there are four components that played a very important role to say what Zoho it is today. So first are the people who play an important role in the success and the culture. What culture do we do, uh, do we follow inside Zoho for us to make the customers really happy? Right, so these are the two things that I've covered so far. And this is just an example of how workplace has changed, right? Sitting in an individual cabin, not talking to each other, following hierarchy, get leave permissions by standing at the corner of the cabin for two hours. So we have come a long way from that to a lot of collaboration, solitude, or ideas that happen randomly when you bump into someone over a coffee, so this is how a lot of ideas in Zoho has evolved. I have witnessed a lot of conversation that happened in the lunch hall where the CEO just walks to a bunch of people and starts talking and eventually we come up with an idea and start working on a product. So it's more experiential and we work out of everywhere these days. I have uh, the facility to work from home sometimes and when I travel I, I have all the apps on my mobile phone so I get notified when I get an email or there is a new project that has begun or there is a new CRM lead that I have to attend to so as I walk I have all these apps present on my mobile phone so essentially the takeaway from this this set of slide decks is though the keys for success may remain the same You've heard a lot of people talk about focus, about dedication, about not having a plan, about going with the flow, about staying in the competition. But what we forget to remind ourselves that the locks have changed. So we can't use the same old you know, formula of success, of collaborating with people, or looking for the right kind of talent from you know, different age groups, different geography, different race. So that has changed. And the question remains, has your software adapted to all of these changes? No, is it flexible to the changing times? Because as much as we shape these tools, internally these tools are going to shape us too, right? So if you look at, you take the form of a hammer, everything that you're going to look at is going to look like a nail. And you go hitting it on its head. So to avoid all of this, and to come up with a meaningful business solution where the internal customers and the external customers are happy. This is the basic blueprint that, that we came up with, that we also saw earlier in the slide. So you reach to customers, acquire them, and retain them. And then we have a bunch of applications that help you in doing this. It's taking some time to load. And then, I think I skipped a bunch of slides, sorry. So you engage, you empower by creating, collaborating and also communicating with the internal employees. And then we have a bunch of app for that. And then how you run your own operations. So based on this, we've come up with an entire suite of applications. How we also expand and procure. So this is something that you would want to look at at this time because we thought at one point when we were expanding the suite of business applications, we also wanted people to have a platform where they can build their own apps. So Zoho Creator is one such where with very minimum background of programming, you can build your own apps and put it on your mobile and get going from there. So this is how um, our entire suite of applications look like that are tightly integrated and talk to each other. So we engage, empower, we also run ops and we stand out. So I've intended to play a video here but I think it's just getting ready, we'll come back to that. So we do a lot of dog fooding 
here in Zoho. Um, I use Zoho Mail and uh, I extensively use Zoho projects even for uh, some of my own personal projects. Say when I'm building the house, I had my architect and, and several other people who were part of Zoho projects and we, we did a good job there. So this is just a quick big picture of how Zoho looks. So here comes the most important part where uh, I would like to engage with you if you have some questions because so far it looked like a neat success story, story and we didn't see a lot of thorns, right? What are the challenges that we faced? What are the challenges that we faced and what did we do things differently? Look, not, not in the conventional manner. So the set of things that we broke at Zoho are these. So I'm not going to go in detail with this, but just take a look at these topics and if you have any questions, if you can just choose the topic, I can just talk about only those now to save some time. So if any of you from the audience want to choose from any of this and I can elaborate on that, yes? Performance appraisal, that's a good one. So um, I'm going to tell you how performance appraisal happens inside Zoho because it's a, it's a very important measure of growth of performance, of capability of an individual. Here we have a lot of mentors inside Zoho, though we have a lot of managers too. I, I report to the CEO of the COO of the company and uh, I've not had a formal performance appraisal so far. So it, hap it might have happened over a coffee and I didn't know or maybe I put forward an idea or we had a discussion during a lunch break. So this is over a period of time we see the person evolving, how they contribute to the big picture, what kind of problems they bring to the table. So we've never had a performance appraisal that is really formal in Zoho. Never it was at the end of the year, there was one meeting and say, okay, for the kind of work that you did, this is the percentage of salary increase you got and then you go back. So it's, it's most, mostly two ways. Yes. HR as a marketing, um, I'll tell you the e example of my story. Um, when I joined Zoho in 2010, I came to Zoho because one of uh, the persons I used to know who used to work in Zoho was moving to another country and she couldn't continue and I took up the role. So the HR here inside Zoho does not do the marketing of Zoho is this and Zoho is that and, and we give you free lunch, infrastructure is great, there's flexi timing. So we don't go and do that kind of mass hiring we go by referral, by someone in the organization referring someone whom they think adds value to the organization. So we, we go by references. Very rarely do we go for mass recruiting or recruiting based on experiences and, and what they say in the resume. Yeah. Idea of a software professional. I would first want you to say what is your idea of a software profession? Any of you, what is your idea of a software profession? Can any of you pass the mic? Is there an extra mic? So the, there can be no right or wrong definition for an, a software professional. Maybe you can talk about qualification or whom do you look at as a software professional? Who can, somebody who can work for long hours especially. Okay, someone who can work for long hours, almost live out of the office, okay. Can, can you just um, increase your volume and just say your answer from that? Experience. Ground experience. Cloud experience. Ground, ground experience. Ground experience, okay. Previous experience before, before you enter the world. Okay, okay, okay. Anybody else? Wearing tag, working in front of computers, wearing tag and wearing out, right? So um, I want, once again, a, a lot of this, I can give you myself as an example. Um, I joined Zoho as a software, um, as a soft skills and a communications trainer way back in 2010. Now I handle at least three projects um, that involves a lot of IT and design and development. I do a lot of webinars where I solve technical issues for the customers and I did my postgrad in industrial microbiology. So I have not done any certification 
have not gone to college that, that teaches you a BCA or any computer applications. So the fundamental goes back to uh, interweaving HR as marketing and also how we understand employability and academic credentials inside Zoho that is valid even today. So we believe in bringing people and giving them the right environment and opportunity and the mentorship. So if they have the passion and the willingness, they are ready to learn. So in the case of Zoho, I'll just come back to you in a minute, ma'am. So um, in case of Zoho, I was um, a good lab rat that, that could be experimented on because the end customer was more like me. So if the end customer did not understand uh, most of our products, if I do not understand, then they are not going to understand. So I proved to be a good lab rat without much of the software background. Yes. Interviews? Um, yes, that's once again, you know how interviews work normally. We, we look for Nokri.com or the HRS uh, schedule an interview with someone and they come and visit our office and uh, most of the questions that you have can be manipulated. Tell me about yourself, it starts, right? And then what are the challenges that you faced in the world? Uh, why do you think I should hire you? So some of the questions I can come prepared with that I can manipulate and I can enter the organization. But over a period of time, say six months of time, when you start throwing challenges at them, when, when you give them the freedom to experiment, uh, in a way, the mask wears off, they start being themselves. So only after six months, you actually get to know what the person really is capable of when you introduce them to the environment. So we don't do a lot of fuss about interviews. Uh, we, we give them a rough, idea of what to expect in the first one year and then we let them dive into the work right from day one. In fact, when I joined, none of my certificates from 12th grade or college was even checked. I Lateral entries. So the way Zoho is structured, the way we have evolved, we have a lot of managers who are, you know, heading various projects today have been in Zoho for over 15 years, since the time of its inception. So, um, it's a good thing that nobody left because part of Zoho has become their vision too. So, there's no lot of lateral movement that happens. We don't, every day hire, we, every three months we don't see a new project manager. We don't see a new VP of marketing. Yeah. So, you're saying that a uh, lot of homegrown talents are there in Zoho? Yes, yes. Okay. And how do you do that? Only on base, I mean, uh, with their, you know, giving, throwing them challenges? Uh, um, we don't plan on throwing challenges. If I have to give you my own story, um, I did a microbiology and then I did uh, personality development and soft skills and presentation. So, one of the days, the CEO just walks into where I was working and... Um, so I just realized someone is breathing through my shoulders and staring at my comp and I see the CEO standing. So the question comes, so Kupu, what are you doing these days? So I tell him the number of trainings I do and um, for the customer reps and various people who go forward and uh, talk to the customers. So he just casually asks the question, so you train people on body language and this and that. Why don't you go and face the customer, start learning product? So let's see how the customers receive, um, you know, in a way, I was an outsider that did not work inside the product, so I didn't use a lot of jargons and I went through a lot of difficulty in understanding the different stages or features of the product, so that helped in a way. So that's the kind of challenges you face. No VC, um, Zoho is quite famous for that. So th the first ever time we rode the wave of um, cloud, and we created two pro products, we got a good revenue in, in several millions and it was good enough for us to get going for several years. So our CEO was very strict, was very focused, he was very passionate about retaining the freedom that the company had, the culture we had inside Zoho. So from uh, 1996 till date, there has been several offers but we have been st strict to say no to a uh, venture capitalist. So we wanted the freedom to fail, we wanted the freedom to experiment and also retain the culture as such. But that's not a challenge, uh, the retention, the, the right set of people, the right level of talent to grow. 
right? Besides yeah. the who you're saying? Yeah. But, but how does it um, relate to where the money is coming from? Who is giving you the paycheck? Right. I mean, uh, basically as the organization grows, the potential to grow yeah. can be much higher if it is actually fueled. Right. So that, that's a good point you're bringing up. So the one important thing that you see in the 10 rules we break is that they are very tightly inter interlinked with each other. So when Zoho grew, when I, when I just became a part of Zoho, we do not have a fancy office. Even today we do not have a fancy office with, you know, um, we only have the essential infrastructure. We um, uh, stayed in our own building for a long time as we grew, so we saved money there. So whatever money we saved, we reinvested in our own business. We, even we employees got a share of the profit too. So we do not go any, do any extravagance.